Evening everybody, this is Dave Herman alias Daz about to start a video tonight. Working on my illustration, a man drawing a holographic transhuman entity in the cockpit of his uh, space shuttle craft drifting somewhere cloaked in the dark energy. Thanks for tuning in. It is February 8th, 2019 at a quarter to nine. So, let's uh, enlarge this and bring it into uh, an area where I can work. Okay, there you go. And you can kind of see that's the maximum I can get this image in here and still show all of this part of the head, face and eyes and devices and stuff going on there. I'm going to do a little drawing for you. And uh, we're recording, so unless my computer continues to crash, <laughs> it's having some problems today. I don't know why, but I'm having it do too many tasks at once, of course. So let's get into drawing. Uh, we're going to work on layer uh, shading above additional stuff there. So uh, get the brush. And I want to select the darker of the five shades I work with on these printed circuit board designs. To do that I turn on my layer swatch. These are my pigments. I have them on the higher layer and I just keep moving it up as I draw. So I take my uh, eyedropper, pick the darkest of the five colors that I want to use right now, go back to my brush, turn off this layer. Oops. This layer. And then I can work. So let's say I'm going to work this area and this area and everything. We're not going to really work there. So let's enlarge just a little bit more. Put this in the center of the head. Kind of go like that. Take Mr. Hand and bring it over there where we can see it all. Okay, go to our brush. And so uh, I've got a lot of this out of focus, hazy uh, beginnings of complex stuff. So some of it I'll refine a little bit for you. And that will be what I do. So... Let's see what we can do here. Uh, so we got this set at 30 here and here. So opacity is about 43, and this is about 13, roughly 3 to 1. And then I can adjust the brush size with my tablet just using the ring. You can do it any way you want on your computer. And then I'll draw in some dark lines with pressure. So I'm going to start here and work my way down. Uh, coming across, we just do a little like a niche. Do that with pressure and then I can come across and I don't want it to all be in the same focus. But this can be going into the head itself like that or it could be sticking out so I have it start close to the head and then it moves as it moves away from the head it comes out of the surface of planes of the head the metallic uh, organic structure and we'll have some various planes down here Everything looks like a miniature folded crimped metal of some type. Vacuum cleaners and circuitry and electric components, organic transfers of material via fluids, lubricants, air, whatever uh, is making the transfer. And it's still a little bit too harsh. I'll take this back a little and start to do some more drawing. Mm -hmm. 
I give myself lots of wiggle room with this stuff. Doesn't have to be dead nuts perfect. As long as it's it all relates to each other, like it's all going in the same direction. I'm working on X, Y, or Z axis. I keep that in my mind. I keep uh, angles kind of um, in my mind so that I know if things are should be pointing all in a similar direction. See, we're separating this now. We made a, a lighter tone just by separating this from that plane. Very interesting, see? So, like here, you see this line? I could make this uh, become a thing just by drawing in a line and then widening it as if it was had a width and there it is so it becomes a thing and then I can shape that into something else and bear in mind thinking all the time of do I want to add gold, do I want to add light blue, do I want to add another blue, do I want to add uh, any of the five colors of solder mass that we will be applying to the plastic substrate that makes a PDF or printed or PD, PCB a printed circuit board and uh, you have your plastic and you have your layers of solder mass so this paint would actually when it <coughs> outputs to the board is a solder mask applied uh, pixel by pixel. I kid you not, pixel by pixel. So we work in a specific res and then we do conversions. <clears throat> and I have the rudimentary stuff of that down, but I have a computer guy that's my partner who does hardware, firmware, software, and he maintains what to do after I create the illustration. And uh, if you go to our Facebook presence page, it's called PCB Paintings. You will see me does, uh, well, you see my artwork anyways, and a reference to the brain. The brain is the other half of this group of two men. And he's the guy, if you want to ask any questions, just send him an email. And uh, at this point in stage, nobody's really uh, queried uh, the brain. They just trust the brain. So the brain's intimidating, you know. He, he knows his stuff, for sure. Hardware, firmware, software. Answer your questions, for sure. But, uh, you know, since it's art, people are just digging the art, I think, and they're not so interested in how I output it or whatever. It's cool. Alright, so when you get something like this done, to have separation, uh, there's two shades of gold. One is the actual, like, pea green kind of a gold, but a little more yellow that's the plastic. And then there's actually, like, a gold gold that goes on top of it. If I want to draw with the gold gold, I can either take some from here, with the eyedropper, and then that shows up down here in the lower left of this toolbar, which is what we're going to do. It'll be fine for now. And then I'll get the brush and I'll well, add some pigment right here to give this the lift I want as imaginary object in 3D space, but it's in a 2D drawing. However, it's cool to have that realism without being too real. You know, too photographic realism, uh, I can do it. It's incredibly time-consuming uh, as a hobby. These are hobbies till we figure out how to make money. Uh, at which point, I'll be glad to work an infinity of hours on them, but... I kind of limit my work so I can do other things in life. 
Um, but I really enjoy making these. And you're watching me create. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. If you're watching this. So I brighten this. This one looks a little further back. I can put a little bit of a glint on there. And so all these things are wrapped and twisted. And they could be wire. They can be metal. They can be uh, stone. They could be organic materials. They could be anything. It's kind of like the maker dreams it out, like I'm doing. And then that would go into the proper machine that would uh, understand this and produce it with the proper goods. That would get it started. Okay, so I've got this, and a lot of this looks like can look like even a. If I was thinking like a horn, maybe a French horn or something, you know, or not a horn, yeah, like a horn. All the valves and stuff, like a saxophone. That's the word I'm trying to think of, saxophone. So you got the kind of a valve looking metals and stuff like that. Why not? You know? Why not? Mm -hmm. Toggle back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the dark. So I'll leave the gold there. I'll flip this toggle. I don't know if I can select. Uh, let me get the eyedropper. I'm going to go way into this little hole where I use the dark. Should be dark enough for what I want to do without being a solid. And I'll go back to my brush. And now I can toggle between these two and continue to work so uh, this is very minutia type stuff you know just small details and then you want all these planes if I like I do I want them to follow some type of a parallel course to each other so I'll do that establish a width you kind of just fit things into each other, solidify them with shadows and stuff. This is all going on and then this plane would be coming towards me and I gotta think of it kind of an organic nature and then down to here if this is a light or a laser or a weapon or who knows. And I'm just working away. Uh, you get to see that it's kind of a just a labor of love. You can put in a ton of hours and there's no way to rush. Because it would compromise the overall look. I have to like really ponder what I'm doing. I think my room needs some oxygen. I'm yawning. So I'm going to uh, pop open a window even though it's chilly because there's no air and I'm starting to fall out let me save that so we'll go up here hit file save and I'll turn this off for a second go open a window okay we return to this and you've seen some slow development coming along in here so let's move along to this way now like this is all blurred out and stretched and elongated and stuff um, because I don't want it to be all on super focus and everything look identical and all that stuff uh, but you know it's gonna need some work so I would just enhance a little bit here and there
It's nice and quiet and peaceful in here. Very, very nice in the winter. I miss not having a uh, fireplace inside. This is the first place in like forever that I haven't had a fireplace. That's really. Uh, every place I lived in Washington up until this place, which is now in June, will be four years, had fireplaces. So I lived in Redmond, I lived in Kirkland, I lived in North Bend. And I live in Olympia as I move around and study the state, you know, go hiking and kayaking and biking in different areas and make enough to get by. It's kind of the life. I would like to have a, a way of working remote on things like this that would be nice to get a little paycheck every now and then. But uh, occasionally... You know, I do tattoos. I'm semi-retired tattoo artist. And every now and then I land a nice tasty tattoo, you know, that's worth a few bucks. Right in about the time where I'm ready to lose my mind because I need the dough, it ends up showing up magically from the cosmos. <laughs> Right every time, I swear, it's when I lose faith and I go, I'm never going to make it. Ah. And something magic happens. So, totally a guy that lives on the edge. And, uh, you know, would love to know <laughs> a girl that likes living on the edge, a woman. Loves the outdoors into cooking like me. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I'm a hippie guy, so I make, right now I got beans soaking. Four kinds of beans, and tomorrow I will uh, give them a rinse after they soak overnight, put the fresh water in the pot with the beans, and bring to a boil and cook for a couple hours. And then I'm going to um, at the same time, at some point, I will put chicken drumsticks in the broiler, broil them, and then uh, pull the meat off the bones and add it to my stew, which will be just delicious. Mm. You know, it's supposed to last three, four days. I always eat it in two days because it's just too tasty, too healthy, too delicious. Anytime you make stuff from scratch, it's just so delicious. You know, a little bit of garlic, a little pepper, uh, onions, you know, some vegetables. If you got tomatoes around, they're good to throw in tomato sauce. And all the good little tasty fixings, even a pickle or two, vinegar, spices, mmm, 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 brown rice, soy sauce. All that good stuff. But I do eat meat, so I'm not a vegetarian. I like meat. Once in a while I eat a good chunk for protein and make sure things are working right in the body. But uh, speaking of bodies, we're working on this body of the uh, yet to be realized being we're creating in a holographic space. Supposedly, if I was on a spaceship and I was making something useful as a companion <laughs> and to help the man with his tasks, like fixing the craft or hunting for food, doing things. See how all this fits together, complicated little pieces and stuff. I really dig all that kind of minutia. And now let's work over on this side a little bit. Let's save this. That's no problem. If you don't remember to save, look out. Because what will happen is you crush the whole freaking file and then you just want to kill yourself. Uh, a lot of times I'll just save the whole file again under a different name so I have a duplicate 
the redundancy is so important in art. <laughs> oh, man. And that's the thing that, you know, it's just so hard to keep track of as you're working on stuff. The names and the files and all that stuff. Ugh. It takes up so much memory. And you're offloading it and you're taking up time for that. And it's just art's time consuming work, that's for sure. You gotta be into it. It's a labor of love and you know, especially something like this where I don't generate any funds, but I'm generating a healthy mind forever, having to think like this and uh, use parts of my brain, like when you play Scrabble or uh, challenge yourself to trivia or, you know, you do complex things, chiseling or any kind of a hand I or coordination kind of thing or uh, martial art or something like that that uses the brain, the hands, the body, the limbs, your feet. All that's good stuff. Plus arts of meditation most of the time if I'm not talking and doing this I'm just in the zone and I, I, I'm supposed to be working on a book I'm writing to edit. Got to get back into my edit every few days. Looking for a really professional editor. I'm so bad at editing my own science fiction book. The problem is you make the same errors again and again. I think if you just, you know, you really need to have a pro for sure. The pro of everything is important. Realize you're not a discipline of all disciplines. I can start things. I can meander in things the finish of things is my weak spot I need a finisher someone that says okay you know two weeks ago you started this and you didn't finish that here's what I think we should do all right and then I do it and then that's complete and we move on to the next thing and someone's trying to figure out how to make money on it why I'm producing art I like to create. And this is a very detailed video you get to watch. Okay, so this is a nice shade of that blue. I love that. Um, I I'm going to get some of that blue. So, I'm gonna, uh, I think this should have like, uh, I guess I could create all the swatches. Like I do. Huh. All right, I'm mumbling. Let me uh, grab an ink and do some of this stuff here. You see I'm adding in a lighter tone just in front. Now I'll press hard and continue to lay down pigment, which looks like I'm lightening. And so this is becoming more opaque, less transparent, and by doing so, the color starts to show up. It maintains the integrity of luminosity. Now this could be a strange wire coming across, so I'll put some of that in. This could curve around here a little bit. I'll do some of that. You know, I just... Try and keep it creative, bring this one down into this row, from this row of stuff down to this row of stuff. Really, you just got to uh, play around. When you create a rudimentary thing like this, then you can pretend it's somebody else's art you're working on and trying to enhance, or you can think of it as your own, but whatever works, you know, you've got to get it done. <laughs> and that's the hard part. Keeping it going, keeping yourself going. Uh, doesn't have to be a hard line always. It can not be a hard line, but it can be a hard line if you want. And 
the, out of the nothing comes a something. It's kind of how it works, the way I draw. You know, it's kind of the, the vagueness in this particular project uh, is of interest. Because it piques your interest. You say, oh, I wish it was all in focus so I could really see what it was and stuff like that. And it's like, well, it's in a hologram. <laughs> I don't want it all focused up, you know. It's, it's art in a very complex dimensional tool. that our guy is working on. So see how this is all kind of undefined, caterpillar-like looking. I might add ridges or something to show how the pigment that's the lightest fits into the pigment that's the darkest. Mm-hmm. Shadows across sometimes. Shadows are cool. You gotta just run them. So you have some uh, different ridges and different planes of existence at different heights and different tiers, shall we say. T I E R S as in layers. Uh, Then you just kind of work around, you know, just follow things that you think should be sharper in focus. And bear in mind, that's what you're doing. If your brush is too dark, lighten it up and work on the side of a plane, you know, to an object. It doesn't have to be making the ridge so much. Shading is cool. You know, I can have it come around like that. We'll take this up to 30 minutes. That'll be good and we'll process it. And then I can add it to uh, my PCP, PCB page with the relevant link to this project in the works. There's so much to think about that, you know, a cast shadow, a real shadow, a fake shadow, uh, an object, how do I want it to look? It's very, very difficult to think of all this. And then you got to bring it home, you know. You know. The nice thing is if it was, you could leave it in the hospital. I leave it for someone you know to work in. All right, babbling. So I drift off into the nighttime zoneless outer space warp of my brain. Got some nice elevation there. This is a cap wrapping around here. This looks like the side of an engine uh, ridges in a engine or something, like a piston popped out or something. You know, you can relate to its machinery what it is and it's got to be coherent looking so things got to fit into one another's sockets and it's encased you don't see like a wire wire but uh, you know things are running through tunnels and flat planes and surfaces that are hidden of the build Yep, so I'm going to call that. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Have a good evening.